Today's lesson will cover work energy and power, which forms part of the physics syllabus. We'll first look at work, then energy, and then power. So we're we'll starting off with work. The fundamental formula for work is work is equal to force times by displacement. Work is a scalar quantity, and the direct definition, um, work done on an object by a force, is equal to the product of the displacement and the component of the force parallel to the displacement. We need to stress this, that last part of the definition about the force parallel to the displacement. Um, the work done on an object is only done in a singular plane, therefore you need all your forces to be acting in directly the same direction. We will look at a couple of examples to address this definition. So an example examining the force and displacement when they are in the same direction. Um, so for example, we have 20 newtons to the right um, and a force of frictions of 2 newtons to the left. That means we have a net force acting, um, a net force of 18 newtons acting to the right and therefore the object will definitely move um, to the right. Therefore, its displacement will be to the right and the force applied will also be to the right. What we need to do for this is applying the formula of work equals force times displacement. We work out the work done um, by the net force. So the net force being 20 newtons multiplied by um, the displacement. Displacement given here hypothetically would be five. If it was hypothetically five meters, that means the work done by your net force is equal to 100 joules. Um, however, we need to look at the net work done. You need to first work out um, the net work uh, or the work done by the force of friction because that will obviously be opposing the work done by the applied force or the net force. To do this, we say W net is equal to the work of the applied force or net force minus by the work of the force of friction. We've just worked this out to be 20 times 5, which is 100. So that's basically 100 minus by the work done to, um, by friction, which is your force of 2 newtons, as displayed here, multiplied by how the, the displacement for which it's done, which is also 5 meters. So you get 100 minus 10, which is equal to 90 joules. So your net force, um, exper your, the work done by the net force is equal to 90 joules. Then the next direction, I mean the next um, example, which will bring into some fundamentals from the definition that I mentioned earlier, is when the force and displacement are not in the same direction. As we can see here, force applied to the object is up and right, whereas the object will only move straight across the plane to the right. Therefore, your force being upwards and your displacement being right are not in the same direction. Therefore, what we need to do is we need to work out the component of the force acting parallel to the displacement, which would be this straight line here, your f of x, right? And to do this, we use uh, trigonometric ratios. Trigonometric ratios, um, so what we would do, we'd say our work done by the, the applied force is equal to the force, is equal to the applied force multiplied by... Um, the, the parallel, I mean, the, the component of the force um, parallel to the displacement. And in this case, we'll be using a trigonometric ratio of cos. Then, um, if our object is on a slope, so here we have a five kilogram object on a slope, what we need to do is we work out the work applied um, by this uh, 80, newtons, 80 newton force. So it's a 80 newtons multiplied um, by 6 because the displacement is 6 meters um, multiplied by the component. So we're finding out the parallel component of this 80 newtons force. So we'll use um, cos 10 degrees and we get 472.7 joules. Then we also work, we work out, we look at the work done um, by the force of gravity. So obviously this is another um, important thing to do, thing to work out because this will be opposing your work done by your applied force. And to do this, we are simply taking um, our force multiplied by our displacement for which the force acts. 
and in order to work out the force um, done by gravity, so to get the 16.75, you would work out your component of your of your uh, mass acting down the slope, because um, that's your you know you would work out the component acting down the slope because that is uh, parallel to the displacement, and you would come out to get 100.55 joules. Then just if we look at this other example relating back to normal forces. We can't always say that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. In this particular example, if an object is on a slope, the normal force being upwards is equal to your perpendicular component of your weight, which is calculated as m multiplied by g multiplied by cos theta, theta being the angle of your slope, minus by the um, upward component of your force applied. Then if we look at our force of friction relating back to this example, remember um, in, in a previous video we looked at, um, we looked at uh, using this formula here where you take the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. So if we um, multiply the coefficient of friction by the normal force, we'll get 4.82 newtons. Then all you do is to work out the work done by this force, you'll simply take the force multiplied by the displacement for which the force acts and get 28.92 joules. Then if we're looking at energy, the upward force when lifting an object at a constant velocity is equal to its weight. Remember I said earlier in a previous video, if your object is moving at constant velocity or at rest, there is no net force acting on the object which means your forces up will equal your forces down, your forces right will equal your forces left. So you can see that if your object is moving upwards at a constant velocity, the force upwards is simply equal to the object's weight. Then if we look at potential energy, gravitational potential energy is defined as the energy an object possesses due to its position relative to a reference point. It is given by the formula potential energy is equal to mass multiplied by the gravitational constant multiplied by height. You can see by this annotated formula, mass is in kilograms, gravitational constant being 9.8, height is measured in meters. It's very important to know your standard units for all these measurements um, because a lot of the time what they do, as I mentioned earlier in a previous video, is they will give you um, the mass in grams or whatever, or the height in centimeters. So you make sure you know your conversions to get them into meters and kilograms respectively. Um, EP, as I mentioned from the definition, always measured relative to a reference point. So if you have a ball in the air, the H you would use is um, the distance between the ball and the ground. However, if you have a ball hanging from um, like a nail or whatever, your height would be the um, height of the ball from the nail and as yeah and then the kinetic energy kinetic energy is defined as the energy an object has as a result of the object's um, motion uh, when a constant resultant force is applied without the object gaining height obviously that gaining height is symbolic to potential energy you immediately think about potential energy the work done by the net force is transferred as kinetic energy. The formula for kinetic energy is given as half mass multiplied by the square of the velocity. As we can see at this example, also starts to illustrate a bit of the uh, mechanical energy, which we'll get into just now. When the ball is at its maximum height here and it is stationary, it obviously has its maximum potential energy and zero kinetic energy. When it is halfway to the ground, it is still above your reference point, which is the ground, so it does possess some uh, potential energy. However, because it is moving and has a velocity, it also possesses some kinetic energy. When it is on the ground, it is no longer at a height above your reference point, so all the energy is given as kinetic energy. Then another very important section um, of the syllabus is your types of collisions, your elastic and inelastic collisions. Um, if we look at 
if we look at elastic and inelastic collisions, an elastic collision is when your kinetic energy before the collision is equal to your kinetic energy after the collision. An inelastic collision is when your um, energy before your collision is not equal to your energy, your kinetic energy um, after your collision. This, the reason for this is that some of the energy is converted into other forms of energy during the collision, namely heat energy, light, sound or deformation energy, either a change in size or shape. Then just going a bit into mechanical energy, mechanical energy is defined as the sum of the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy at a point. It is given as the kinetic energy multiplied, I mean, um, added to the potential energy. So if we go back to this example, you can see if mechanical energy um, is applied uh, to when the ball is in this position because it possesses um, potential energy and kinetic energy. Then these, these are just some great examples which we um, give credits to the uh, science department at St. John's College. Um, when friction is present, some mechanical energy is converted into heat and mechanical energy is not conserved. Similarly, if work is done on the object, mechanical energy is also not conserved. So if we look at these um, uh, typical examples, this is when energy is fully conserved when the object moves from A to B. The object moves along um, AB with no friction acting. Therefore, the total energy at A is equal to the total, total energy at B. Energy lost by an object, um, the energy at A uh, is not equal to the energy at B. Object moves along AB with friction acting. So this surface will obviously have some friction. That means that the object will lose energy as it goes up the slope due to friction. Therefore, your energy at A, before it starts um, being interfered by with friction, will be greater than your total energy at B. Then similarly, um, if you can, your object can also gain energy in moving from A to B with the help of an engine. This means that your energy at A will be less than your energy at B. Then another uh, concept regarding work energy and power is the work energy theorem. Uh, this you would have never seen in um, a grade 11 type syllabus, syllabus, only relating to grade 12 syllabus. It is given um, as W net is equal to the change in EK of an object. The direct IB definition for this is the work done by a net force on an object is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the object. A uh, very useful sort of, not formula, but useful terms to know is that your FG parallel is always equal to your change in your um, potential energy. FG parallel being your parallel component of the weight of the object. Then power. Power is uh, defined as the rate at which work is done. Power is equal to work over time. Um, uh, work is measured in joules, powers in watts, and T is obviously time which is measured in seconds. Once again, I cannot stress this anymore, know your um, the units for which each of these um, components is measured in because they will, say for example, they will give you time in minutes and you'll have to convert it into seconds. Then if we look at power efficiency, power efficiency is given as the actual power over how much power the, the machine is rated to produce multiplied by 100%. Um, and this will obviously give you a percentage of how efficient your, your machine is or whatever. Then just some useful um, explanations. When you're dealing with a collision between objects, always apply the conservation law of linear momentum, as well as impulse, which is the change in momentum of objects. When objects are swinging, you must utilize the conservation law of mechanical energy. This is defined as the total energy in a system cannot be created nor destroyed only transferred from one form to another. So this is obviously the energy transferring from potential energy to kinetic energy and vice versa, such as when objects slide up slopes or slide down slopes. Then when your object is accelerating, you must apply your um, work energy theorem, 
because the object accelerating is obviously causing a change in velocity and therefore a change in your kinetic energy. That concludes the video for work, energy and power. Thank you.